When an opponent is turtling hard, how do you push into them? Is it better to just contain and macro up? Are medevac drops worth it when you don't have air superiority? When an opponent is playing for a long game, should you change your build? An armor rod is better unit to push tanks with. Oof, that's a lot of questions. I like it. This is this is very focused though. I'm not going to criticize the early game, guys. People play at the level they play at. This is gold 2500. I'm sure both players are playing like total ass. Um, so. The most recent question was Marauders. Are they better than Marines? Well, they take a lot more damage, but they do a lot more damage to Siege Tanks. I would actually say Marines are better versus pure tanks. Do you guys agree or disagree? I think they are. The problem is Widow Mines and Hellions do really well versus Marines. That's why you normally go for more of a TVP split. Three Tech Labs, two Reactors on your first five barracks. So it's a mix of Marauder Marine. Now, I'm assuming it's Mech. I don't know it's actually Mech, but I'm assuming it's probably going to be a very turtle Mech player. Notice how he's building Silver League turrets just randomly around his base at like four minutes in a planetary. So this is a very regular thing we see. What if the opponent's turtling hard? So the first tell you get of this is when they build a planetary on their natural, right? And that means your opponent's plan is to jerk off for the entire game. So um, essentially, if you guys were playing PUBG or a Battle Royale, this is opponent, this is the tell right here, four or five minutes into the game. You already know your opponent's plan is to go find a shed get in a corner behind the door, sit behind a crate, and then just wait for the entire game and hope the circle closes in on them. That's that's the game plan of the opponent. Now, this, people get frustrated. They, oh, he's turtling. He's turtling. Ah, 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 blah, blah. What do I do? And it's like, dude, the guy's sitting in the shed. What do you do? Go pick up every gun on the map. Go pick up the, the bloody crate that drops. Go get your machine gun. Go get your friggin' level 3 armor. He's just sitting there. He's not attacking you. He can't do anything to you. So you either just go effing kill him, and you avoid the planetary by maybe dropping the main, or you just take like five bases and do whatever you want. That's it. It's really, really easy. So... How do, you, how do you push in? Should you change your build? Absolutely, absolutely. So most of the time, no, in StarCraft. Stick to your build. You've got a good, confident plan. Oh, I saw he went for um, a barracks, and it's a bit faster than normally I see them building a barracks. Oh, should I change my build? No, 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 no. But if you see someone building missile turrets four minutes into the game, building a planetary, which is a massive hit to their income, because not only does it cost a lot of money, it means they don't have an orbital dropping mules or scanning. You see them just turtling with tanks on the high ground. This guy's never going to move out. He has nothing he can do to you. So what do you do to swap, up, swap it up there? Well, you need a game plan for that scenario. It's really good if you can get some reps practicing against an opponent, right? So super turtle player, right? So there's usually obvious tells, right? Uh, you know, uh, obvious tells... Uh, what, what were some of those? Oh, cannons on the net. Cannon, you know. Cannons. Spines. Bunkers, right? Already up early. Uh, planetary. Fortress. On the natural. Turrets. Static around their, you know. Turrets. Spores. Around their base. Super early. Uh, you know. Tanks on the high ground. These are all some obvious tells uh, that someone might be going down that line. So how would I play? So what would I... What would my reaction be? Um, in general, for someone who's very greedy, you can just be very greedy. You know, just just go kill them. In this case, bypass the static with a drop or nidus, etc. Right? Could work. Or play even greedier. Now. This is a drastic change to your build, right? So you need to batch things up to be efficient. What do I mean by batching things up? A lot of people are like, oh, I should be greedy. And they're like, oh, um, and they like, they build a command center in their main a bit earlier than normal. And I'm like, no, no, no. Don't just build a command center. Take a third and a fourth on location. So literally in this scenario, as Zenosol, I go, okay, cool. I'm going to grab, I'm going to wait till I have 800 minerals. My I'm going to box my SCVs. I'm going to go build command center, click, build command center, click. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to hold down the SCV key. So I have at least three SCVs queued up on each command center for the whole game. That's like the highest priority, right? Just do not miss any SCV production. Okay. So, so that's one. Make sure always three SCVs 
queued on each CC. Build two eBays or armories at once. Make eight barracks at once, right? Like literally just do everything at once. As long as your economic machine is rolling, you're taking those bases early, you're not missing SCVs, you don't have to worry about getting attacked. So what are we skipping on, right? Where, you know, you can, you can power. You can skip on unit production, right? Completely, whilst being greedy, you know? And then explode into army and be maxed way quicker than normal, okay? Now to capitalize on this, you can just play mass uh, medevac buyer and just swarm with, you know, unlimited bases, right? Doom drop, doom drop with half your army, A move the other half, or, you know, on the front, that sort of stuff. Or, I don't know what I just did, bookmark, bookmarks. Or, you can just make mass, you know, 3 3 Thors, right? You could do that as well off six bases, right? And A move that to victory. Either one's going to work because you're going to have so much more money than your opponent, but it's going to be so easy. So easy because you are going to be at 80 workers when your opponent's thinking about moving out to a third. Because all you got was you saw the planetary and your opponent's sitting there with turrets and it's like 12 minutes and they're floating a third out and you're on five bases and you're maxed out. So this is the, the drastic swap against someone who has shown my hand to be, I am going to just sit there. And you can apply this to Zerg, you can apply this to Protoss, take double four, take two Nexus. Take four hatcheries, you know, like just just go crazy on the greed. And it might feel too greedy. They can't attack you. This is a different scenario to normal. There is no worry. For the next three, four minutes, do nothing but just get your upgrades, drone up, build your crazy workers, and you'll kick ass really hard. <coughs> I haven't played StarCraft in years. Damn. Is the user base still quite small? It's been two million dollar two million uh players flat for over ten years, Dwayne. Hasn't really changed. Um yeah, StarCraft has an untouched uh, player base. A lot of other games go up and down with other game releases, but StarCraft players are, are hardcore and always have been. <laughs> they don't care about other game releases, pretty much. Um, maybe it dipped a tiny bit for AoE 4 for like two weeks and then everyone went back to SC2. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think you should take five bases versus a two base turtle. I would suspect them building BCs. Take three or four bases. Check for a ninja base and then go kill them. I would say the important thing is just do everything at once, right? So just, just taking two command centers at once and getting those up, yeah, that's enough, right? But the thing is, the important thing isn't worrying about what's the right number of bases, because that's not what, what's holding you back. As a gold league player, a platinum league, even a diamond league player, it's your APM. It's how quickly you go in those directions and get those things done. So a lot of people make the mistake, they're like, should I build two command centers or three? It doesn't matter, because what's holding you back is you being unfamiliar with the build and being awkward in that scenario. It's not... Is that the right decision to make, right? It's not that at all. So let's watch from, we, we can watch from Xenosouls while I, I keep talking about this. So thank you, Hadawog, for the gifted sub, mate. Really appreciate the love, by the way. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, don't get me wrong. Should you also check for corner bases? Yes. Okay, that's that's a very good point. Um, okay. Uh, bonus. Planetary on the natural usually equals corner bases plus bcs and other fancy silly stuff so what do we do scan to check what they are building slash scout it regularly right send units to check for hidden bases right so that's like some bonus first a planetary specifically check for that stuff i mean in general you can do that while being very greedy though and building up towards your thors you can also like Oh, this guy's going X unit, and maybe you need to make an adjustment. But if you've got a good solid plan, that's the foundation, right? I'm going to go five base, mass three, three Thor or something like that. So, yeah, the problem most players have is because they're just learning a build order still. They're just following it. Playing against someone like this, they, they really struggle with. Um, I would say if you're macroing well enough, um, usually you can transition um and, and do okay right and still you could still make it work maybe you can kill them or you can you know do all sorts of stuff Let, let's just take a quick look at this game and um was there any other questions i didn't answer 
Yeah, a medevac drops worth it when they have air superiority. So in a game like this where they build turrets everywhere, it can be really hard. But if you do, for instance... Nice. If you do, for instance, drop the main, unless there's like 10 turrets on the edge, what are they going to do? There's one tank. You just stim in, you're going to do so much damage. So this is what I was talking about with bypass the static defense. Usually the easiest path to victory could just be like, you could just do a two base all in. You can just go effing kill them. That is totally a viable thing. You come in with four medevacs, you siege a few tanks here, some marines. If you get the tank kill, that's great. Even if you don't, you just sit here with some tanks and marines. That tank isn't covering. You're getting rid of all the starports and factories. You just leave those units there on hold position in their main. You don't even look at it and you go take two bases and continue on with whatever that macro plan is. So the Vikings are going to fly into the Cyclone. So here we see the classic Gold League Siege maneuver. We do scan. We see where the tank can siege. I mean, we can siege our tanks like here and be hitting the planetary. So we go way too deep here. <laughs> that's just that's just getting comfortable with the units, right? Being like, yeah, I need to move in here. It's like, come on, dude. Guys, you can see the dotted line on one of those tanks reaches... Wait a second. I can't see the dotted line over here. That's weird. I can see the dotted line there. Is it just invisible on the white flooring? Is that a bug on this map? I can see the white dot there. I think maybe it's there. Maybe it's... No? That's weird, right? So normally, if you click on a siege tank, guys, you can see its radius, right? But that's... Look at that. It bugs out. Because, look, it's coming in on this, so it should be going like that. But instead, it curves off to the right for some reason. So... Yeah, people are saying that's the tank on the high ground, but I don't have the tank on the high ground selected. So why is that even showing up? Okay, now it's cleared. Did I have both of them selected somehow? That's weird. But yeah, anyway, the point being, this tank sieged way too close. Okay, now we can see it. There's its line. So you can see it's, it's, it's super deep in here. And did we click on the enemy tank? Oh, we actually clicked on the enemy tank. Ah, oh, but one of our tanks was out of range. Yeah. The problem with sieging in range of a planetary is if you're not target firing, your units won't shoot it. And oh, that tank wasn't targeted on the other tank, even though the others were. That's weird. Anyways, so yeah, this game's just going to probably be one of these games where, okay, we kind of messed up that attack. We didn't check for corner bases. They're just going to set up defensive positions and do harassment. And uh, we probably don't have experience playing a big enough macro game to kill them. So yeah, these sort of players are pretty tricky to play against. But it's kind of the first big real test you get on the ladder, I would say, in terms of your mental flexibility, which is a skill that helps you all through your career as a StarCraft player. And it's, hey, can I play a very different game versus these players that kind of force me to do that? And um, the thing is, because these guys fail to ever expand other than sneaky corner bases, if you just take four or five bases, you will have so much more money than them, you can be way more efficient. But in this case, we're just taking a third... We're very slow to build up. We only were making one upgrade at the time, so we're not really using our engineering base as quickly as we could. And even though we're, we're still ahead on supply and still doing pretty well, you can see how we're going to get impatient and shove into the planetary and tanks repeatedly, and he's going to backstab us. So it's our impatience that'll get us killed and our inability to be comfortable going, bam, extra base, bam, extra base, which is 100% what we need in this sort of scenario. Does anyone know how to get the time up when watching a replay? Control shift o is the standard replay toggle. I don't know if that's the same for WCS, but th that's it for the game heart one that I use anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So that's it, right? We're like... And don't, don't be worried about containing your opponent in these sort of games. While you're macroing, just leave everything at home and just leave some spotters out. So once they move out to take a base, get over there with urgency and go kill it because as they move out from their planetaries, they'll present it. But if you can just take more bases, you could be on eight barracks right now, you know, and, and that sort of stuff, that'd be great. Um, obviously, this guy's playing Mass Viking, so <laughs> it's kind of a very silly composition. You're not really going to beat him in the air. So you should probably just ignore starport production, I guess. Maybe keep some medevacs in the back for healing. Um... Mass Thor is the easiest army, I would say, in terms of general late game utility that just beats everything if you can have a, an economic advantage. So yeah, it's good stuff. 
All right, guys. I'm not going to watch the rest of this replay. This It's just going to be us headbutting. Let's watch one one army headbutting, one more army headbutting into the planetary. Once again, sieging way closer than we need to. It's not as close as last time, at least. But, uh, yeah. This is what we call an APM drain, guys. We're watching here, but we've only got one tank. So we're not really going to do any real damage with it. But we're staring at it and distracting ourselves. So it's going to really hurt us. Because my opponent, the opponent's also shown a tendency to do harassment like this. In this sort of game, what I'd do is I'd actually either be leaving marines out along the map or if i'm using f2 a lot so it's tricky to do that i might go supply depot supply depot supply depot supply depot supply depot supply depot and that's just going to give me lots of vision of when these vikings move out and once i'm up on five bases or so if they truly are turtling i might even just build a turret over uh, sensor tower here sensor tower over here and then just set up some big siege outside their base while making that giant kind of thor army or battle cruiser army obviously not battle cruisers versus vikings and going from there GG's though. There's a lot of players who play like that on the ladder. It's uh, it's an art form to figuring out how to beat them, guys. It's an art form. But I tell you, once you... A lot of people are like, oh man, I can't do it. It feels awkward. It feels awkward. And I always go, go, go practice in a custom game. Imagine you're doing your normal build. Five minutes, you've scouted your opponent doing some super turtle stuff. Practice building three bases all in one go. Because I guarantee you, the players who complain about this... And, and they get stuck in the problem. What's, what's the biggest mistake you can make in StarCraft, any competitive endeavor? It's leaning away from the problem going, this is too hard, this is too bullshit, this is unfair. We all feel that at times. Things feel unfair. The important thing is to tell those feelings to go fuck themselves. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> the important thing is, is basically to, to go, okay, it feels unfair. Now let's go understand what I need to do in that scenario. And once you understand it and you embrace it, a few games of practice and you can batch up your macro so hard you will destroy you'll realize how easy those games are when you get four or five minutes of freedom but most players when i they're like oh i tried to macro up it didn't work and i look at the game and what do they do they select one probe and they build a nexus and then they go back to staring at their observer and going ah oh, what's he doing what's he doing ah oh. and then they realize they've been supply blocked for a minute and i'm like dude you had a thousand minerals build two nexus hold the probe key down build three pylons then build eight gateways at once batch things up do it all at once big big batched up actions right so you're efficient with your apm that's actually crucial too many players get really disorganized and they're like oh i'll build a forge um i'll build a nexus oh i'll queue up one probe i'll queue up one pylon and the thing is they can't if you're you don't need to play starcraft very quickly true speed in starcraft is based on a foundation of efficiency it's you doing a lot of things in one go rather than going back to, oh, I'll build a pylon. Two seconds later, oh, I need another pylon. Two seconds later, oh, I need to build another pylon. The, the expert Masters 2 player who only plays with 90 APM, and there are Masters 2 players who only play with 90 APM. You know what they do? They just build four pylons, queue up a few more probes, select a Nexus, go build a Nexus. Whereas the, 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 the forever stuck in Platinum 3 player who's playing with the exact same APM, or maybe even a lot higher APM, is like, oh, build a pylon! Um, ah, build a pylon! Ah, oh, build a gateway! Their double forge is sitting there idle, they've forgotten about it, because they're, they're trying to do things in this disorganized way. Whereas that Masters 2 player with the same APM, what are they doing? They're like, ah, this is a greedy situation. I know what I like to do in a greedy situation. Build a Nexus. Shift build a Nexus. Build two forges and then build eight gateways. And they'll just do that. And that's actually, it's amazing what you can get done with very low APM. And especially, it's not even the APM because when you do things like that, your APM will get higher just because you're you're doing things more efficiently, but your mouse speed is way slower. You're, you're like, it's less frantic. It's, it's all about efficient quality, quality actions. And that's huge, yeah. A lot of people think Starcraft, like just spam the buttons, man, you spam the buttons. 